I'm Helen Caldicott. I'm a paediatrician and physician. And the reason I'm wearing this T-shirt, which is Vermont, USA, is that I've just beamed the beautiful state of Vermont where Ben and Jerry's ice cream began. I know Ben and Jerry. And uh, they've got an old leaking nuclear power plant there beyond its use by date. I was there a year ago talking about the dangers the uh, Natural Resources Committee in the State Legislature, whom I addressed, were very sceptical initially, but when I went back a year later they were totally amenable to what I had to say, because Energy, who owns the reactor, has been lying over the last year. They said first there were no underground pipes, which of course there are, um, and there were no leaks. Well, they've been leaking tritium into the water at very high concentration levels, and I think strontium-90 as well. So the committee now um, were absolutely open to what I had to say. And rather being sceptical of what I said about the medical consequences of nuclear power, they were extremely sceptical about energy, which just wants to make money by selling uh, electricity. So what would be the process here that you envisage that could in some way uh, control, control the problem. Vermont is the only state which has a law that says the state legislature can, if it's so decided, shut down a nuclear power plant. So if we get, and, and what it means is they want to extend the license of this reactor from 2012 where it ends. It's been operating for 40 years, which is beyond its use by date, for another 20 years. And that's extremely dangerous because the reactor is really it's falling to bits, its cooling tower collapsed recently. Uh, so if Vermont uh, decides not to extend the license, the legislators, then that, that reactor gets closed down and that, that becomes a model to empower people who live around 100 and the other 102 nuclear reactors in America to do the same thing, even though they don't have the same law. So it's very, very important. The other states don't have the legislation, but you know, laws can always be written. Laws are not set in stone. Laws are set up for the well-being of the majority of people. And if they don't conform to that standard, they must be changed. And so people are going to have to move at a grassroots level and change the law. So they can, can close down these hideously medically dangerous uh, machines. So are there other reactors of a similar age and um, building uh, standards as, as the Vermont reactor and what would happen? Would we likely to see something like Chernobyl or, or Three Mile Island or what would... Yes, most reactors in America, there are 103 operating reactors, are old. Not as old as the Vermont Yankee, that's one of the oldest, but many are very old. Now the nuclear industry has been pushing the line that nuclear power is the answer to global warming because it doesn't, it's clean, green and sustainable, three lies. It produces uh, in the whole fuel cycle huge amounts of CO2 because if you go to a uranium mine in Australia, Olympic Dam um, or Ranger, you, you just can't believe the size of the trucks, the amount of CO2 the pump, they pump out, the huge diggers and graders. So if you take the whole nuclear fuel cycle from uranium mining right through to the chemical processes and the milling and the enriching and building the reactor and storing the waste for half a million years and transportation of waste. At the moment a nuclear power plant produces one third the amount of CO2 as a similar sized gas fired electricity plant. But within a decade or so as the quality, the concentration of the uranium ore declines because it's all been used, they're going to use much more fossil fuel to extract the amount of uranium to produce the fuel for nuclear power. And within 10 or 20 years, nuclear power will produce the same amount of CO2 as a gas fired plant. So that argument is fallacious. Uh, number two, um, if there was a meltdown a la Chernobyl, well, for instance, the, um, the terrorists who flew into the World Trade Towers had, in, in fact, targeted the two nuclear power plant reactors 35 miles from New York, called Indian Point 1 and 2. And they didn't go into them because they thought there may be missiles protecting them. In truth, there's nothing to protect nuclear power plants against terrorist attack. But had they gone into them, 
that would have meant the end of uh, Manhattan, you know, the, the financial capital of the world. Um, so in retrospect, they probably should have, if that's what they wanted to achieve. Um, uh, there's a new book now out called Chernobyl, published by the New York Academy of Sciences, which translated 5,000 articles written in Russian, uh, medical articles. Now, there aren't many medical documentations written in English about the effects of Chernobyl, but this is a very magnificent publication. Chernobyl, um, New York Academy of Sciences, and you should get a copy if you can. I think you can also download it as a PDF from their website. More than a quarter of a million people have died there, and this is a huge conspiracy. 40% of the European landmass is currently radioactive. Much of the food we import from Europe is radioactive because these elements, the radiation, remains radioactive for 600 to a quarter of a million years. article last week in Business Week, uh, a very conservative business magazine saying that nuclear power is economically almost dead but very sick. And they don't print those, and Wall Street Journal has been saying this too. So. The fact is that nuclear power is heavily subsidized by the government and what people may not know is that to enrich uranium, and that's what you put in a nuclear reactor, it's like putting wood in a fire, you put uranium in a reactor, it's extremely energy consuming and uranium enrichment alone in this country uses 3% of all the electricity generated. So you have to take that off, the amount of electricity generated to get a good figure, an accurate figure. Uh, each nuclear reactor only lasts for about 15 to 30 years and then they become so radioactive that you can't send people in them to operate them because they'll be so irradiated they could get cancer or have deformed children. So then they have to either take them apart by remote control and bury the parts somewhere for a long time, isolated from the environment, or cover them up, up, them up with half a mile of concrete and earth for half a million years and nobody must dig into them because they're terribly dangerous. So that's called decommissioning. That's not taken into the cost of electricity. And massive amounts of very poisonous radioactive waste are produced in reactors. The government hasn't the faintest idea what to do with it. There's just been a national uh, survey done by the Department of Energy asking the public what they should do with the nuclear waste. And they don't know. And it has to be stored from the environment for one million years. And a recent survey, survey by the EPA using MIT geologists says that whatever they put this waste in, it's so hot and radioactive, be it glass, ceramics, metal or whatever, will start to disintegrate within 10 years. And it has to be isolated for one million years. Now the cost of this has never been considered in the cost of electricity from nuclear power.